Who's paying, you or me? Exactly, which means I get to choose. What's selfish about that? Selfish is you... Oh, bastard. Did she call me a bastard? Does this mean we have to get our own dinner? No way, it's her turn. Ah! Joe. She's hung up on you. I told you, she pays, she chooses. She wants pineapple on the pizza. Well, we'll get her own pizza. This will be it. Got over our little hissy fit, have we? Oh, g'day. It's seen your detective hash me. <laughs> you guys coming for a beer? Oh, sorry. Sort of depends. Mm hmm. Right, right, right. Yep, no worries. Thanks for that. Drive by shooting on Boundary Road. Oh, so much for pizza. <laughs> I heard a screech of tyres outside and a car took off. Did you see the car? Did you get a register number by any chance? No, I'm sorry. It took me a while to get to the window. By the time I looked through it, it had gone. Well, look, I'll do a door knock, see if anyone saw anything. I can't believe anybody would do this. Do you live alone? Uh, no, uh, Shane's my husband. He should be home any minute. Uh, so it's just the two of you? Oh, and our son, Lee. Uh, where's he? <laughs> Probably out with his mates somewhere. He's just turned 20. Uh. Hey, Jack. Excuse me. I only noticed because I saw the torchlight reflecting off its collar. Disgusting. What sort of low life shoots a family pet? So, three rounds into the house, one into the dog. This is probably a 22. This is no accident. Right, well, I'll check with all the neighbours, see if anyone saw anything at all. This is probably the husband. <coughs> What's happening? Mr Kelly, I'm a senior detective hash and there's been a shooting, sir. Is she all right? No, no, no your wife is fine, but I'm afraid your dog is. Oh, the mongrels. Any idea who these mongrels are? There's a bunch of hoons live up the road, always going on about a barking. It's probably one of them. But these hoons want to shoot into your house? Into the house? Yeah, three rounds, but they missed your wife. Dad, what's going on? Who's this? The detective. Why? Someone shot at your mother. No. And look what they've done to your dog. Uh, oh, no. Fully, I'm so sorry. Is this your son, Lee? That's right. I'm so sorry, Lee. Lee, do you have any ideas you'd want to do this? <laughs> no. What would I know? Mrs Kelly, somebody deliberately shot at your house. You could have been killed. Could have been some moron who got a rifle for Christmas and was taking pot shots at the house. Well, it's more likely to be somebody who's got a grudge against you or your family. And I think your son can help us. Why? Because it doesn't stretch my detective skills to find out that someone's less than happy with him. That was just an accident he had yesterday. Kelly, please. Now I ran into a doorknob. Lee, in my job, you get to know the difference. But an injury from a doorknob, an injury from a fist. So what's the story? Got into a bit of a blue behind the pub yesterday. Oh, Lee! Oh. Which pub? Steam packet. Oh. And what was the blue about? Just mucking around. Well, why did you apologise to your dog? Because um, usually around this time I take her for a walk, and if I had her, if I had her, she'd still be alive. Oh, you can't blame yourself for that, love. You weren't to know it was going to happen. Excuse me. Yes. What? John? John! Hey. Come on now, mate. Huh? Hey. How is she? No broken bones, as far as we can tell. She's going to be okay. Well, there were no more at the hospital. Do you want to follow us? Oh, Come on. Move away from the van. Please. Can I 
to see her now. I think it's best if she sleeps. She's been given a sedative. You said I can see her. I want to see her now. Her larynx may be bruised. I don't want her talking. Hey. Hey, yourself. Hey, Dr. Sid, no talking. It hurt. Mm. I know that's going to be a huge challenge for you. No, I don't. I'm choking. I'm so off. She's going on about angels of mercy and white light. That's the sedative talking. She'll be okay in the morning. I was choking. She must have been choking on her seatbelt. The mm, car was upside down. I couldn't reach. I couldn't reach. Someone must have released the belt for her. Her angel of mercy. Oh, save me. Where did they come from? Another car? Where did they come from? <sighs> Headlights. Yeah, I'm... So... You eat. Light. Light colour. You sure? S swerve. Right, so, a, a, a light, light coloured you ran off the road? <laughs> How'd you go with the door knock last night? Oh, yeah, neighbour reckons she saw a light blue ute speeding off just after those shots were fired. So I reckon she was run off the road by a light coloured ute. Not the same one? It has to be. Yeah, it fits. I mean, the Kellys live up that way about half a click. So what we need is a rego number or a better description of that vehicle. I want to talk to Lee Kelly again. Son, why? Why does he drive? He doesn't, but he knows more about this shooter than he's letting on. And if he can tell us who the shooter is, then we know who ran Joe off the road, right? Right. I told you last night, I don't know anything. Well, well, I was just hoping your memory had improved. Just come through here, mate. Who's this? Hmm? Uh, the shooter? The victim. Anyone home? Oh. Yes, sir, how can I help you? Oh, your mute's gone. Right. It's probably just as well if you're thinking about driving. <laughs> what? No, I'm all right. That's why I walked home. I just went back to get my ute and the old girl's gone. What colour are you? Light blue, why? So he's the guy running off the road? Well, PJ certainly seems to think so. No sign of my good Samaritan. Ah, good Samaritan now, is it? I thought he was a guardian angel or something. You can mock, but I would have died if he hadn't come by when he did. Yes, we know that. And believe it or not, we're all extremely grateful. We've issued a bullet in asking him to come forward. Good. Yeah, so this other guy just walked straight into the station, did he? Uh, yeah, he said he wanted to report his ute stolen. Maybe it was. Yeah, oh, oldest trick in the book. Especially if you've just been involved in a drive-by shooting. Well, he did that too. Well, he does have priors for firearms offences. I haven't so much as touched the gun since the last time. And when was that, Mick? Last night? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Why would I want to shoot some poor mutt? I like dogs. Well, maybe you were firing off and you hit the dog by mistake. But the real target was the Kellys. Well, I don't even know any Kellys, except for Ned. Look, I'm not the only person in town that drives a ute, you know. A blue ute like yours forced a colleague off the road last night. What? When? Just after the shooting. Well, it wasn't me, Mr Hashem, I told you. Forced her off the road. The car flipped. She was choking on a seatbelt. Now, she could have died. She didn't, did she? No, thanks to you. Oh, look, I told you, I don't know what you're talking about. Some buggers nicked my ute. You should be looking for them. Mick, listen to me. You could be looking at an attempted murder here. What? Look, what time did all this happen? 7.38 last night. Well, there you go, then. I was in the steam packet, well, a little after seven. Steam packet? So? We're not all hoity-toity imperial drinkers. Can anyone confirm that you were there? Well, I don't know. There was a couple of dozen punters there. Look, I was playing the pokies. I didn't get their names. <coughs> Wait a minute. I had a blue with a Sheila. I put my beer glass down on the pokie machine to go and get some more change, and she was using it when I got back. 
I ripped right into her, let me tell you. Dennis had to calm things down when he came over. Dennis Morgan, the licensee? Yeah, you ask him. Mick Mulligan? Of course I know him. He practically lives here. Well, we understand he got into a bit of a blue with a woman customer last night. <laughs> she would have had his guts for garters too if I hadn't have come to him. Yeah. What time is this? Oh, I don't know. At nine? Nine thirty, maybe? Not earlier. Uh, could have been. Look, to be honest with you, I don't know. Gets too busy in here at nights to keep an eye on the clock. So the pokies are good for business then? Oh, lifesavers, mate. Without them, we'd be out of business. Oh. Well, I understand they attract uh, a little bit of trouble, though. Like what? Like fist fights. He was a bit of a Donny book here a couple of days ago. No? No? Well, I've been a kid called Lee Kelly. Oh, I don't know. We, we haven't had a Donny book in here for a long time. Uh, this is a class establishment now. Hmm. Mick Mulligan. Now, he alleges that his vehicle was stolen from your car park last night. Alleges? Well, there's some doubt about it. What's he drive? A blue ute. But come to think of it, there was a light blue ute in the car park when I locked up last night. About midnight. And you got no idea what time Mick left the pub? No. After I saved you from the dragon lady, I worked in the office all night. Linda, grab these for me, will you? He knows I never leave till closing time. She's got the Tom tits for me because I've got a couple of bob on the slate. But he didn't know this woman's name, Mick, so we couldn't ask her, so you haven't got an alibi. Look, I just come in here to report stolen property. We have a witness that says you it wasn't stolen, that it was still in the car park at midnight. Well, maybe they stole it after that, then. Then how do you explain its use in last night's drive-by shooting? Well, I don't know, do I? Maybe the bugger who stole it brought it back and then stole it again this morning. <laughs> you really expect us to believe that? Linda. Who? Linda the barmaid. You ask her. She'll know I couldn't possibly have been driving me yet. Yeah, how's that? Because I always leave my keys with her behind the bar, don't I? If ever I have too much to drink, she refuses to give them back to me. And did you have too much last night? <laughs> what do you reckon? The barmaid confirms that he gave her the keys and when he wanted to leave around 11.15, she refused to give them back to him. And what's more, they're still there. So you've had to let him go? Uh, I, I just think there's a connection with him and the Kellys. Like what? This blue ute? I don't know. I mean, both Mick Mulligan and Lee Kelly drink at the steam packet. Oh, that's not such a big coincidence. There's only four drinking pubs in town. The odds aren't exactly stacked. We've got an arm to hold up now, the Juicy Rooster. You want us to get you a doctor? I don't need a doctor. Honestly, I'm fine. I mean, he just waved a bit of wood at me. Bit of wood? You know, like a handle. Well, like an axe handle. Yeah. Yeah, it's still armed robbery, ain't it? Can you describe him? Yeah, um, he's a big guy. Uh, face covered, you know, jeans, dark top. Scary. Well, it's OK. It's all over now, so you can just stay calm. Calm. All right, I'm fine. I mean, I just reckon my boss will go ballistic. All the money. He took nearly two grand. Well, you did the right thing handing it over. It's not worth getting hurt for that. Exactly. Hey, um, can you, can you do me a favour? Thank you. You okay? Yeah. Okay, can you, um, can you tell me which way he went? Yeah, he got into the car and did a wheelie up the road. He was heading towards the old town hall. What sort of car? Uh, a you. What colour? Light blue, I think. Light blue. Sounds like the colour of the day. Mick Mulligan guy's been busy. First a drive by, then running me off the road, and now an armed rob. Oh, it's a bit hard to buy. I mean, he seems too much of a loser to be a criminal mastermind. Yeah, well, he must be if he hangs out of the steam packet. Just drop it, Joe. He's the one who saved your life. Yeah, come again? We think he's the one that stopped to help you. <laughs> yeah, right, I don't think so. Look. Fifty metres down the road, we've got a set of tyre marks. Someone's obviously stopped in a hurry and reversed back. Yeah, the guy who saved me. Yeah. And they were obviously speeding. Maybe you... No, Joe, think about it. We've only got one speeding car on that stretch of road that we know about. He pushes you off the road, realises what he's done, he stops, reverses back to help you. No way. You just don't want it to be the same guy. It has to be the same guy. It's the same vehicle. Have you got any proof of that? OK. There's an outside chance there's two 
Pale blue youths shooting up the neighbourhood. Well, that's just it, isn't it? If he had the 22 that he used to shoot up the Kellys, why didn't he use it in the robbery? But he ran out of ammo. I mean, look, we're talking about Mick Mulligan here. It's not the sharpest tool in the box. So you haven't found the ute yet? No, we haven't found the ute, but the boys are bringing Mick in. Why are you so sure he robbed the Juicy Rooster? Could have been the person who ever stole his ute. <laughs> if you believe Mick's version. Have you actually established any link between these two crimes? You mean apart from the blue ute? Where's Mick? He's not home. You try a second home? Nah, sorry, I haven't seen him today. What time does he usually come in? Varies, you know. Sometimes he's here by lunchtime. Can you tell us anything more about this blue you that was in your car park last night? Like what? Like a rego number? Well, uh, well, that was Victorian plate. Numbers, no, mate, sorry. Was it there this morning when you opened up? <laughs> I can't recall that. Uh, no, look, I don't think it was. Mr Morgan? Yes, Linda. Right in there. Uh, uh. Mick! Mick, are you okay, mate? Stand back, please. Call the ambulance, yeah. What happened to you, Mick? I don't know. Well, well, who did this to you? I don't know. Middle-aged assault victim. Just someone giving you a fair old quilting. I don't know who it was. A guy from Vine. Just, just hang in there. We'll get you to the hospital. Just hang in there, OK? So I can go home now? If you hold still long enough so I can check your pupils. You're still here. Uh, Paige, I, I thought you were still working. I am. The owner of the ute's been assaulted. We've just brought him in. Another patient. You could start a new career as a triage nurse. Can I see him? I haven't discharged you yet. Yeah, Paige. Why? Because there's no way he's the guy who saved me. You said you didn't see him. Yeah, I know, but I'll know. Mr Mulligan, is it? Well, now, what have you been up to? I was mugged. Mugged? You didn't say that before. Don't even think about it. Yes, the nose is definitely broken. Please, come this way. Where'd you find him? Found him in the dunny of the steam packet. It's not him. How do you know? His hands, it's... His hands? Yeah, his hands, it's not him. Joe, he owns the vehicle involved. He's got priors for firearms and he matches the general description given by the kid of the Juicy Rooster. But he's not the guy who stopped to help me. Check the emergency call. It wasn't made by that bloke. You know whose phone he used? Whose? Yours. It must have been on the seat. Yeah, I was talking to you. What's selfish about that? Selfish is you... First, the Kelly house is shot at and a blue ute is seen speeding away from the scene. Not me. Second, a blue ute runs my colleague, Constable Parrish, off the road. Third, a blue ute is involved in a robbery at the Juicy Rooster. No, wrong. Third, I report me blue ute stolen. And fourth, we find you assaulted at the Steam Packet Hotel, the same hotel that Lee Kelly drinks at. So what is going on? Oh, what's going on is... Whoever stole my ute is a very busy boy, that's what's going on. So you deny committing an armed robbery this morning at the establishment in question? Well, how could I be committing a robbery? It's a spicy chicken or whatever you call it. And I've been bleeding all over this steam packet floor since 10.30. Since 10.30? Oh, near enough. Thank you, blokes. Excuse me. How long ago do you reckon Mr Mulligan sustained his injuries? <laughs> what? You want me to be a forensic expert now? No. Educated guess. Well... The coagulation of the blood in the nose, I would say, an hour, two hours ago? Not half an hour ago? Oh, no, definitely longer than that. You will find the person who did this damage. We're working on it. I've already told you. I never saw who it was. I was attacked from behind. Right. 
Which is why you sustained injuries to your face instead of the back of your head. Yeah? Well, that's how it happened. So, tell us about it. Well, I just used the facilities and I was washing my hands, right? At the sink? Yeah. The one with the mirror above it? In which you would see somebody coming up behind you? I never saw it hit me, right? I don't know nothing about no shootings, no robberies, nor nothing else. Because somebody stole your ute. That's right. Oh. And what's more, if you find the bugger who stole it, can I have it back, please? He can't have done the Juicy Rooster if he was being bashed in the dunny at the time. And if he didn't do the Juicy Rooster, then someone must have stolen his ute. Well, assuming it was his ute. Oh, don't lay me with a second ute. One's hard enough to keep track of as it is. I've got the supervisor faxing through a list of previous employees from the Juicy Rooster. So, sometime between midnight last night and opening time this morning... 10.30am. Yep, someone spots Mick's ute looking lonely in the car park of the Steam Packet Hotel and hotwires it. They head for the Juicy Rooster... Why there? Because they just happened to know that it was banking day and the week's takings were just sitting there. So it's an inside job. Someone who knows the banking schedule. Hey, look who's on this list of previous employees. Hello, hello. Hmm. Lee Kelly. I'm bringing him in, eh? Ta. Huh. So are you suggesting now that the robbery is totally separate from the shooting? Same you, different crook. Otherwise, why would they use an axe handle instead of a rifle? So what happened last night? OK, somewhat. Could be a robber, could be Mick... Could be someone entirely different. Takes mix you, heads out towards the Kelly place. Takes a few pot shots at the house, shoots a dog, speeds away, runs Joe off the road, realises what they've done, reverses back to help him. No, that's not how it happened. Parrish, what are you doing here? The doctor said I could go. Home, not back to work. Look, I'm fine, but you've got it all wrong. Nobody ran me off the road. Then what did happen? My mobile phone earpiece thing fell out and I was feeling around for it on the ground. I must have veered straight into an oncoming car. Overcompensated and lost it. It was all my fault. The blue ute had nothing to do with it. Lee, I believe you worked at the Juicy Rooster. A couple of years ago, why? How long were you there? Four months. What's that got to do with anything? So, long enough to know their routine, when they did their banking, that sort of thing. I just worked on the front counter, that's all. Why'd you leave? Didn't have much choice, really. They gave me the push as soon as I turned 18. They can't do that? No, they made up some excuse about me not being able to do the job and that, but I knew that wasn't the reason. Well, probably got pretty upset about that, eh? Mm, yeah. Do you want to get back at them at all? No. <laughs> Why won't you tell me what this is about? Oh, yeah, OK. There was uh, an armed robbery at the Juicy Rooster this morning. Yeah. I, I, I didn't do it. Can you account for your movements this morning? Yeah, I was hanging out down at the shops. Did anyone see you there? I bought a pie at the Brown Owl. The chick there might remember me. OK, I'll check that out. You'll be OK, love. The chick. Totally different voice. And he called me Love. I mean, you wouldn't get a kid like Lee calling anybody Love. Would you recognise the voice again? I don't know. It's still fuzzy. What about Lee driving the ute? No, I told you, I don't remember. Well, Paige. young Lee is not as memorable as you would like to think he is. Well, the chick didn't remember him. We were kind of busy, actually, she says. Oh, well, he's still not off the hook for the robbery, and he might have been a bloke that helped you. The bloke who helped me wore a denim jacket. So, lots of people wear denim jackets. He spoke kind of slow. His hands, I just, I just remember his hands. Young Lee, he's kind of skinny, yeah? Huh. So, the guy from the Juicy Rooster said the crook was a big guy. Scary. Victims always think the crook's big. OK. Bring Hamish in. Well? It might have been, but... No, he was bigger than that. As big as me? Bigger. More kind of solid, you know. So, there's nobody there that you recognise? No, sorry. Don't worry about it, mate. Thanks for coming in.
there was another vehicle. Sure? Yeah, 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 I remember as I was crashing, thinking it was coming quite fast. We're chasing the ute. Maybe that's why he was speeding. And it wasn't the ute that stopped. So my good Samaritan isn't a crim. So who stopped? <laughs> you okay? Yeah, I heard it stop, the, the engine running it. Sounded like a diesel. Diesel? Yeah, you yeah, know, like, like an old four-wheel drive. And who have we seen driving a four-wheel drive diesel recently? Thank Kelly. I think you've got the wrong bloke. What's all this? Hello? This is Kelly. I was just trying to thank your husband for saving my life last night. Oh. Not me. They're mistaken. The Old Ridge Road, around 7.30? That was when... When you were shot at, yes. We think the shooter's ute inadvertently forced Constable Parrish off the road. The car flipped. I was caught in the seatbelt. I would have died if someone hadn't come along and helped me. It wasn't me, love. Shane was at a meeting in the other direction. Uh, a meeting? Um, the SES. He's a volunteer. So, so you know how to deal with car accident victims? It wasn't me. I've told you that I wasn't there. <laughs> the, the car that stopped was a four-wheel drive. It was a, a diesel four-wheel drive. Well, there's a lot of them about. Yes, there are. And you were driving a four-wheel drive last night. And I happened to notice that... Uh, Yours isn't in the driveway. No. I sold it. OK, why? Well, that's not against the law, is it? It wasn't very reliable. Look, if you spoke to those hoons up the road yet, they killed our dog. Shane, this isn't about the dog, is it? I reckon it is. Look. If someone is intimidating you, it's against the law. So what's going on? I don't know what you're talking about. So, was he your angel of mercy or not? Yep, same voice, same hands. But he denied it. Why? Because he was chasing the ute. Yeah? Huh? He was definitely travelling at speed. And that gives me the link I need. Sorry? Lee Kelly's father was chasing the shooter but lies about it because he knew why the shooter shot at the house. Well, why? I, I, I don't know. It, it's got something to do with Lee Kelly's black eye. Where did he get this black eye? The steam packet, the day before yesterday. Anyone else think it's kind of interesting that Mick Mulligan was assaulted at the steam packet as well? So do we know why he was assaulted? An apparently motiveless crime, boss. When I spoke to Mick, he reckoned he had next to no cash on him. Lost it all the previous night on the pokies. I wonder if Lee Kelly plays the pokies. Can't keep him away from the place. So, what's the attraction? You or the pokies? Well, the pokies, of course. All he's interested in. Does he win or lose? I've never seen him win much. In fact, sometimes I wonder where he gets the cash to keep playing. Well, he told me once he's on now, the dock. Yeah. How often do you reckon he plays? Mount Thomas 509, you spent. Another car's been run off the old Ridge Road. Uh, excuse me. Anyone we know? Anyone we know? Uh, Mr. Dennis Morgan. Uh, oh, 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 oh. G'day, Bryce. Oh, oh, oh. Broke that load, I got whiplash. What happened? I got run off the road, didn't I? Any ideas who did it? I oh, know it was. It was Mick Mulligan. You see him? I didn't have to, it was his blue ute. Oh, oh, for crying out loud. Hey, PJ. Show them. How much you reckon? That's about five grand, it's say. Well, the pub takings. Take it with. Chicken. Mm -hmm. 
never seen it before in my life. Then what was it doing in your vehicle? I have no idea. Oh, come on, Dennis. Look, I know you got a bung neck, but you're going to have to do better than that. Mick Mulligan must have put it there. <laughs> Mick Mulligan? Yeah. Yeah, he must have snuck back when I was unconscious and, and planted it there after he ran me off the road. That seems highly unlikely. Especially as Mick Mulligan hasn't even been discharged from hospital yet. What if the money was paid to Dennis to pay off a gambling debt? Are you saying Dennis Morgan was lending money? Who to? The bad punters who can't stop playing the pokies. But Morgan could lose his licence from the Casino and Gaming Authority if it ever came out. Or maybe he thinks it's worth the risk. Well, according to the barmaid, Mick and Lee were two of the biggest losers and they kept playing. They both ended up assaulted. By Dennis Morgan. Probably does his own enforcing. Mick said something about owing Dennis money, remember? But Mick was still in hospital, wasn't he? Dennis Morgan is driving from the direction of the Kelly house. He has $5,000 in an envelope when he's forced off the road. So did Lee run him off the road? Well, you'd have to say he had pretty good motive. Somebody assaults him, takes pot shots at his mother, kills his dog, forces him into crime. Walks away with the dough. Oh, I'd have been tempted. If Lee did do the juicy rooster, he only got two grand. Where did the other three grand come from? We understand that Shane Kelly sold his four-wheel drive this afternoon. That'd be worth about three grand. Mm -hmm. So does Lee now have the elusive blue ute? Probably. Why don't I take Jonesy and check it out, and we'll bring Lee in while we're at it. DJ, this is all just conjecture. Have you got any actual proof? <sighs> no, 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 not yet. I think we should have another word with Nick Mulligan, though. Whatever it is, I didn't do it. You know what, Mick, my old pal? I believe you. Huh? Well, obviously someone stole your ute. It's twice. Well, I told you, didn't I? Dennis Morgan has been lending you money, hasn't he? How'd you find out? He was run off the road this afternoon. Yeah? Couldn't happen to a nicer bastard. It's steep on the old interest, eh? Yeah, are telling me. Is that why he bashed you? Well, you can't get blood out of a stone. That's what I always said to him. You done? Yeah, hey. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, 509, yes, Ben? We found the ute. Well, well, well. Mr Kelly and the ute. Yeah, well, we figured if you had the ute, he'd want to dump it ASAP. And within walking distance of home. So after that, it was easy. Found the ute. Backtrack towards his house. And there he was, just walking home. You can't prove I dumped it. There's a present for you in the front seat. Lee, you need to watch a bit more telly. Have you heard of fingerprints? Forensic evidence? Page. I don't, I don't know anything about the gun. I, I didn't even know it was in there. So you were driving the U. You said forensics. Did you steal it? I didn't steal it. I found it the Savo. You found it? Yeah, it was. It was like abandoned in some in some bushes, and I needed wheels in a hurry. Why? I ran Morgan off the road, but he deserved it. Yeah, why is that? Does this have something to do with the black eye that he gave you when you couldn't pay up? He came on all nice and friendly. <laughs> Lent me some money to play the pokies. How much? Started off with a grand, um, then two. No rush to pay it back. He said I was bound to hit the jackpot if I played him long enough. He didn't tell me how much I was up for an interest bunt. So you ended up owing him about, what, five grand? So you got two grand from the Juicy Rooster? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, where'd you get the rest? I, s I saw my dad's four before. And after Morgan got his money? I just, just lost it. I, I went after him and ran him off the road. If I'd known there was a gun in there, I, I would have shot him. I believe that he took the ute and that he ran Dennis Morgan off the road, but the rest... What, you don't reckon he's done over the juicy rooster? He admitted that. Why didn't Hamish identify him? Well, maybe he had a disguise. You said it yourself, Benny, this bloke was big and scary. Now, is Lee big? Scary? No. That doesn't explain why Shane Kelly denied being my good Samaritan. Exactly. Shane, we, um... We understand you boys got a, a bit of a gambling debt. 
Is that what he said? Five thousand dollars, interest accruing every twenty-four hours. He's an idiot. So what you do about it? You think I've got that sort of money? So, when the lender beats up your son, shoots at your house, you do nothing about it. What could I do? Well, your four-wheel drive's worth a bit. Not when I had to sell it in a hurry. But you still sold it. That's right. Or did your son sell it? He told us he sold it. He also told us that he robbed the juicy rooster. Jane. 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 We're about to charge your boy with armed rob. It's a very serious crime. Nelly always carries a prison sentence. Miss Hack, I love. He knows I did it. You're going to be charged with car stealing and armed robbery. You're not obliged to say or do anything unless you wish Dad, to do so. What are you doing? I'm taking responsibility for my actions, son. But I told them I did it. Well, they didn't believe you. But I did do it. It was me. Don't you think you got enough troubles? Now shut up and look after your mother. Shane, he's just trying to do you a favour. Yeah. Dad, let let me take the blame. It was my fault. If I hadn't have got into the, the... Lee, we can't charge you with something you didn't do. But he only robbed the joint for me. Because he loves you. Shane. Oh, shut up, you idiot. So the blue ute was actually stolen twice. Once by Dennis to do the drive-by shooting and then by Shane to do the robbery because he thought it belonged to Dennis. Uh, to get Dennis arrested for robbery, not realising that the ute actually belonged to poor old Mick. Yeah, then it was taken a third time by Lee. Oh, well, technically he only found it where his father had abandoned it. Doesn't seem fair that the Kellys get charged when Morgan forced them into it. They made their choices, Parrish. I mean, Lee actually used it to lay in wait for Morgan on the old Ridge Road. Yeah, Morgan destroyed their lives. Hmm. Oh, I am looking forward to arresting him. Mate, I am sitting in a hospital bed with... Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, g'day. Look, um, Dennis will give you a buzz back later. Hmm? Thanks. Dennis, Morgan, you're under arrest for car stealing, conduct endangering life and discharging a firearm in a public place. And using a mobile in a hospital. I'm a sick man. We've also notified the casinos and gaming authority about your little loan sharking sideline and they're in the process of removing your licence. Now you do realise you're being bailed on your own undertaking? St David's Court, 17th of next month. That's the one. Good luck. Thanks. Jay? Good luck. Cheers. Mr Kelly, huh? I never really got a chance to thank you for saving my life. It's OK. Anyone would have done the same. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm glad you did. And I'm sorry about... It's funny. This time yesterday I was on my way home wondering what I was going to have for tea. Yes, yeah, so was I. But I love Hawaiian. I know it's got pineapple on it. Who's paying, you or me? Exactly, which means I get to choose. Because pineapple is a fruit and therefore it's good for you. Hello? So I'll have it if I want it. Are you sure you still haven't got concussion? That's what we're arguing about on the phone when I crashed. Pineapple on pizza? Hmm. I wanted it, you didn't. There you go. Proof positive that pineapple on pizza is a health hazard. Mm. You nearly died just talking about it. So, 
Why don't we get it home delivered in future? Who's paying, you or me? Exactly, which means I get to choose. What's selfish about that? Selfish is you... A bastard. Does this mean we have to get our own dinner? No way, it's her turn. Ah! Joe. She's hung up on you. I told you, she pays, she chooses. She wants pineapple on the pizza. Well, we'll get her own pizza. This will be it. Got over our little hissy fit, have we? Oh, good day. It's in your detective hash for me. <laughs> you guys coming for a beer? Oh, sorry. Sort of depends. Mm hmm. Right, right, right. Yep, no worries. Thanks for that. Die by shooting on Boundary Road. Oh, so much for pizza. I heard a screech of tyres outside and a car took off. Did you see the car? Did you get a register number by any chance? No, I'm sorry. It took me a while to get to the window. By the time I looked through it, it had gone. Well, look, I'll do a door knock, see if anyone saw anything. I can't believe anybody would do this. Do you live alone? Uh, no. Uh, Shane's my husband. He should be home any minute. Uh, so it's just the two of you? Oh, and our son, Lee. Uh, where's he? <laughs> Probably out with his mates somewhere. He's just turned 20. Uh. Hey, Joe. Excuse me. I only noticed because I saw the torchlight reflecting off its collar. Disgusting. What sort of low life shoots a family pet? So, three rounds into the house, one into the dog. This is probably a 22. This is no accident. Right, well, I'll check with all the neighbours, see if anyone saw anything at all. It's probably the husband. <laughs> What's happening? Mr. Kelly, I'm a senior detective hash and there's been a shooting, sir. Is she all right? No, no, no your wife is fine, but I'm afraid your dog is. Oh, the mongrels. Any idea who these mongrels are? There's a bunch of hoons live up the road, always going on about a barking. It's probably one of them. Look, these hoons want to shoot into your house? Into the house? Yeah, three rounds, but they missed your wife. Dad, what's going on? Who's this? The detective. Why? Someone shot at your mother. No. And look what they've done to your dog. Uh, Oh, no. Fully, I'm so sorry. Is this your son, Lee? That's I'm right. I'm so sorry, Fully. Lee, do you have any ideas you'd want to do this? <gasps> no. What would I know? Mrs Kelly, somebody deliberately shot at your house. You could have been killed. Could have been some moron who got a rifle for Christmas and was taking pot shots at the house. Well, it's more likely to be somebody who's got a grudge against you or your family. And I think your son can help us. Why? Because it doesn't stretch my detective skills to find out that someone's less than happy with him. That was just an accident he had yesterday. Kelly, please. No, I ran into a doorknob. Lee, in my job, you get to know the difference. But an injury from a doorknob, an injury from a fist. Tell us the story. Got into a bit of a blue behind the pub yesterday. Oh, Lee! Oh. Which pub? Steam packet. Oh. And what was the blue about? Just mucking around. Well, why did you apologize?